Hi, I'm Darren Lazar. I work with Weinman Technology. Our engineers are out in the field working with automotive suppliers and manufacturers every day, helping them determine power output. Power output is one of the important characteristics to determine when manufacturing vehicles so that you can optimize that vehicle for its specific functionality. Whether it's a small passenger car and you want to maximize fuel efficiency, or whether it's a commercial vehicle and you want to maximize its capacity and towing capabilities. Vehicle output power is one of the most critical parameters to determine. The tool that we use to measure output power is called a dynamometer. There are several different kinds of dynamometers. Chassis roll dynamometers for full vehicle development where you drive the vehicle directly on the dynamometer. There's engine cell dynamometers where you're just testing an engine attached to the dynamometer. And then there's also powertrain dynamometers where you may be testing part of the powertrain components, whether it's a transmission, an axle, or even a differential. One of the dynamometers that we utilize every day is a chassis dynamometer. It allows you to drive the vehicle directly on the piece of test equipment and drive it as if you were driving it out on a road or on a test track. The benefit is, is it provides the resistance as if you were going uphill and it also absorbs the energy as if you're going downhill. So this allows you to actually get real world testing in a test cell environment very quickly and accurately. Critical components of a dynamometer include the unit under test, which could be a vehicle or a component, the motors that are in the cell providing the absorption or loading of the unit under test. You also have sensors that pull those signals in. Those signals are tied to hardware. That hardware is a critical component to provide data acquisition and control, and it ties directly into the software. Software is your visualization piece and allows you to record and capture all the data and the events that are taking place out in the test cell. So in order to determine output power, you must first accurately collect both torque and speed. Once you have the torque and speed, you must apply the appropriate calculations in order to determine what your horsepower is. This is where the mathematics becomes extremely important and our engineers use math every day. So let's go take a look at a scaled version of a dynamometer. Here's our small scale dynamometer. It uses National Instruments MIDAC for the control and data acquisition. That's tied in via USB to a PC running LabVIEW. Here we have the dynamometer with the unit under test. It's attached to the rollers that represents the road load. We have electric motors that provide the resistance. And then you have your transistors and components here that allow us to measure torque and speed and the power supply. So if we go over to the PC and run LabVIEW, I'm going to increase the RPM, which we hear there. And now I can come over here and decrease or increase torque on the unit. And that actually represents going up and down a hill or any road load simulation that you want to do. You can also record those values and play them back or do analysis on them at a later date. So now that we've shown you a small scale dynamometer, let's go take a look at a full scale version. We're at Michigan State University's Automotive Research and Engineering Center. And here's a full scale chassis dynamometer. We have a vehicle mounted and secured sensors coming off the engine that allow us to measure torque and speed. Those run directly into the data acquisition and control system. So if during your math and science class you've ever asked yourself, when will I ever use this? The answer is right now. 